Worldwide parent coach and conscious educator Sue DeCaro is on a mission to revitalize the joy in parenting. Welcome to Conscious Parents, Thriving Kids, a podcast designed to help parents all over the world create deeper connections with themselves and their children while overcoming life's daily parenting challenges. Listen in if you want to bring more laughter, love, and enjoyment to your home life. Welcome to Conscious Parents Thriving Kids, a place for all things parenting. I am your host, Sue DeCaro. Today, I'm pleased to introduce my special guest, Madiha Saeed, MD. Madiha is a practicing board-certified family physician in Illinois and a traditionally published author of a best-selling book, The Holistic Rx, Your Guide to Healing Chronic Inflammation and Disease. Medea is a mother of four holistically raised boys who also educate the world. She is, a so, she is on social media as Holistic Mom ND, is also the Director of Education of Documenting Hope, a national organization dedicated to heal chronic disease in children, writes for holistic primary care, and speaks internationally, igniting the world with energy and passion to ignite a healing revolution. She has appeared in numerous prestigious holistic online summits, radio, newspaper, and even international Emmy-winning medical talk shows. Welcome to the show. I'm delighted to have you here. Oh my gosh, it's my honor. This is going to be so much fun. Yay, my favorite topic. (laughs) So much fun. And one of mine as well. So you are amazing. Where were you when my kids were really young? I could certainly have used you. But I'm so glad that you're here today. And I know from conversations that we have had, you help families to really take charge of their own health and wellness. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, especially when you're looking at the statistics, right? The statistics are that, you know, chronic disease is on a rise. And it's not just affecting adults, but it's also affecting children, And one out of every, so 54% of American children have a diagnosed chronic health condition. One, they say by 2025, 80% of the American children will have a diagnosed health condition. And I know, and then if that's not scary enough, they say if we continue at the current trajectory, one out of every four children will have autism by 2033 if if we don't stop what's going on now. And that's if we continue at a growth rate, annual growth rate of 13%. And just recently, I saw an article that we're actually at an annual growth rate of 14%. So it's actually going to hit us faster and stronger. And as parents, you know, when we see these statistics, it can leave us like, you know, oh my gosh, like exhausted and overwhelmed. Um, Because as parents, we know that we're not magicians. I wish, really wish we were. It would really help us in a lot of situations (laughs) with the kids. Right. But so we can't guarantee their happiness and protect them from the losses or rejections. But what we can do is we can dramatically influence their internal systems at any age that are key to a potentially deeply fulfilling and healthy life. And that is what I really want to empower patients with and families with that no matter where you are on that you know, trajectory, no matter where you are on the spectrums, um, that We can really optimize health and healing starting from what you can do right now. Let's talk a little bit about that. I think you said some really key points here is families can influence the system, the system in the child, the system in the family, the brain development, and really bring balance. And as you said, chronic illnesses on the rise, autism, ADHD, allergies, asthma, autoimmune conditions, and so many more. So let's talk a little bit about how food and nutrition can impact some of these issues that we're seeing in children today. What can parents do? So what we can do is first, we need to actually understand what is actually going on with our children and why chronic disease is on the rise. And that is because a chronic disease is directly related to inflammation. And so what is inflammation, right? Inflammation actually does mean a fire inside. <laughs> so it's like you know, a child or, you know, you're like, seriously, there's a fire going on inside of adults and children. And this inflammation is something that we're all familiar with. 
It's this hot, fierce, life-saving reaction that occurs when your body's immune system tries to fight off infections. It helps heal injuries or protects you from disease. Now, there's two, two different types of inflammation, right? And there's acute inflammation. Acute inflammation lasts for a really short time. It's, it's meant to serve a healthy purpose. It basically means that your body's working properly. It gets the bad guys out, keeps the good guys in. Then we have chronic inflammation, and that's too much of a good thing. And that is also sometimes referred to as systemic inflammation. And that gradually destroys this beautiful masterpiece that we were born with, that our children were born with. And it's a hidden, smoldering, painless fire created by your body's immune system as it tries to fight off modern life's daily exposures to triggers like unhealthy food, stress, toxins, allergens, and overgrowth of these bad bugs, and even low-grade infections that drive obesity and chronic disease. And so really focusing on keeping inflammation as low as possible, because right now, you know, they say if we can, again, we, we heard the statistics earlier, but even like all these chronic diseases, they say if we, given current trends, one in every three child will even be born in, in, in 2000 will actually develop diabetes over their lifestyle, lifetime. And so it's these diseases, this increased rate of chronic illness is a direct outcome of an increase in inflammation. And that could be because of the fact that the genes, right? You're like, oh, that's just genetic. Well, actually now there's an entire science that is called epigenetics. And that's a study that the, the it's the study of change in our gene function without physical mutation of the DNA structure. So genes can load the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger, meaning, that our diseases, medications, our internal and external environments, digestive health, including our microbiome, which is the gut bacteria, nutrition, toxins, stressors, exercise, sleep, optimism, and spiritual health can all alter how our genes are expressed. Now, that is so crazy, but empowering all at the same time, because these factors mean that we have the ability to turn these genes on and off that influence the release of these pro-inflammatory cytokines and thereby potentially increasing or decreasing the likelihood that we develop chronic conditions. And again, these can be passed on to our offspring, these genes can. So it's like crazy that we can, we, we're so empowered by just our environment um, that we can then optimize our health and healing just by these simple things that we're gonna discuss later in this, in this talk. Again, another piece of the puzzles that are, this is a reason chronic diseases on a rise is antibiotics. We're, you know, if you go to the doctor, literally every other child is given an antibiotic for, you know, certain things that are maybe in some issues it's necessary, but in some issues, you know, we really have to weigh the risk versus the benefits because the antibiotics are, you know, destroying our gut bacteria and triggering, triggering this process of inflammation, alter nutrition. We're not, you know, when you're kid feeding the kids off the uh, off the kids menu, this drives me crazy. Why is there a kids menu with all junk that the adults would not even eat, right? And not even on top of that, like more than eighty percent of the food that's in North America right now is genetically modified. So there's so many different excessive hygiene. Um, we're keeping them too clean um, with Clorox and destroying our gut microbiome do the hygiene hypothesis that shows that, you know, you actually need these germs to build the immune system. We're not letting our kids out and about anymore. There's so many environmental toxins in the home, um, even the pajamas, right? The pajamas that all these little kids are wearing um, all have flame retardants in them. And that in and of itself can, is a xenoestrogen that messes, again, the internal systems up. But even methylation defects, um, so all of these different pieces are actually related and are causing our, the inflammation to increase, thereby increasing the rates of chronic illness in our children and actually causing, you know, making parenting even difficult. Because when you have a parent, a child that's already sick on the inside, it's very difficult. And then this disease, these chronic illnesses are not allowing the child to live to their full, full potential. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think it causes outward behavioral concerns, we'll call them, that parents don't know what to do with. And so let's talk about, I, I'm putting myself in the, you know, in the thought process of many parents that are listening to 
our conversation. And I imagine they're saying, okay, so what can we do? So Mm -hmm. can you give us, because this is a lot of information and for some may be very overwhelming to think about trying to create this balance, trying to feel empowered as a parent in making choices down to the pajamas of what your environment, food, health, uh, exercise, and you know, toxins and triggers in the environment, what we can do to live a more balanced life. And maybe let's talk about five key ingredients. Absolutely. That they can take away with them and maybe, you know, start with, or at least start with one for, for a listener. But let's talk about five that we can look at. Absolutely. So inflammation is a really complex problem. And there are a number of things that can trigger it or make it worse, right? So a deficit in any of these areas, I call them the foundations of good health, can actually cause or worsen inflammation. And if we are able to put our body back, if we could optimize these key areas, can optimize the health and the healing of our children and our families. So, and again, remember, everybody is different. So you may be eating well, but then you're dealing with a huge relationship problems or their child is having internal stress and trauma. Or if they're, um, or other people may be exercising really well and then they're eating well, but again, they're not living, you know, they have terrible support systems. So there's, or they're, you know, if they're not eating well and they're doing all the other pieces. So everybody, each of you and your families are, have a unique story with particular implications to your health. And improving your physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual is key to healing and preventing chronic conditions. So when I discuss the factors that may contribute to inflammation, remember you guys at home, right? Always think about like where, where my own deficiencies are. So where can I start working? Where is it? So maybe you guys are eating pretty well, but you got to work on this piece. So don't think that you have to do it all at the same time. Think about where you feel that you need to start as that is the one that's the work off, (laughs) right? It's always, you got to take it to where your individual need may be. So I like to group the foundations of good health. So if these foundations of good health are imbalanced, it can lead to chronic conditions. And once you are able to put your body back into balance, you can heal not one symptom, but then all of them simultaneously. And so that is, so I like to group them into digestive health and detoxification and the four S is stress, sleep, social, and spiritual health. So it's like five right there. Woohoo. Yay. Or no. Yeah. <laughs> say, say those again. Stress, sleep, so social. Um, digestive health and detoxification and stress, sleep, social, and spiritual health. And so let's go ahead and dive in a little bit. I'm just going to touch on them and see what we can do. But for digestive health. So we are only as good as we treat our bodies. And the activities and the choices we make on a daily basis can affect our internal world. And imbalanced digestive health, poor nutrition, and environmental toxins can all create blocks, right, in our recovery and to optimize our children's health and our family's health. So digestive health. So now digestive health, our immune cells are activated through the gut. So our gut houses about a hundred trillion bacteria that line our gut lining. And we're only 10 to 32 trillion human cells. Don't think about it too much. It's pretty scary. (laughs) But also 70 to 80% of our immune system lies in the gut. And we have, so we have trillions of these bacteria and our health and our children's health and their actual psychological, you know, everything that's going on in their brains is determined by this microbiome. So the symbiotic relationship and um, the diversity are key to really optimizing our children's and family's health. The May way- I interrupt and inject something yes. here? So I had learned that our gut is our second brain. Absolutely. Because That's the second the power. These, absolutely, because these my this microbiome directly affects it's actually a straight, it's like the gut brain connection. Through the vagus nerve, actually um, controls our every actions and what we crave and how we're going to act. It's so funny. My child, my um, I know my my children. I've tr- I've taught them that what we put in our bodies directly influence how our thoughts are. So, for example, they will come home and they'll be like, "Oh, mom, today I was a, I felt a little edgy." 
like I wanted to like just you know I felt a little edgy at school today so I, I literally the five-year-old was coming back and he was eating a bowl of sauerkraut and I'm like what are you doing like after school snack with sauerkraut I'm like, I'm like what are you doing he goes, I felt a little edgy I think my microbiome might be off so I'm trying to replace it with gut bacteria and I was like okay and this is a five-year-old who is now feels empowered that he is directly connecting and how he feels what his mood is like, what did he feel on edge um, to, to his food and his gut health. And so this is empowering, especially because what happens is that, you know, so we have all this microbiome. If you feed the microbiome good stuff, right, you have more happy bacteria. Yay, everything works well. But if we start feeling it, if we're feeding it artificial foods, you know, antibiotics, these chronic stresses, environmental toxic, it kills off these good bacteria or good friends in your gut and it gets replaced by these bad bacteria and these bad friends in our gut. And those bad friends don't do the job well that the other ones are doing. And they, they let things through that should not be getting through. And that because 70 to 80% of your immune system lies in the gut, it goes and attacks it. And when it goes and attacks it, it leaves immune complexes all over the body that when um, that, that if, if these immune, if immune complexes, and if your immune complexes um, lead to, um, if you have immune complexes that go to your joints, it can cause joint pain, like rheumatoid, you know, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. If it goes to your skin, it can cause eczema. If it goes to your face, it can cause acne and supportive dermatitis that I had. And if it goes to your digestion, it goes to your digestive health and problems with constipation and diarrhea and abdominal pain in children. If it goes to your ears, it can cause earaches and chronic ear infection. If it goes to your sinuses, it can cause chronic sinuses infection. So really the gut health and trying to, we're going to talk about how to optimize those pieces um, is really, really important. That's awesome. And wow, your, your five-year-old son, I can see how your children are teaching the world just by what they're doing for themselves. It is amazing to hear a five-year-old be able to, number one, name their mood at school. Is, that's huge. And two, to know how to help that edginess through what you've taught. Yes, and that's, it empowers them. Right? It and sure that does. It empowers them to, to take control of their own health and to control of their own emotions um, if I know, they know that if like one of them will start to cry for no reason, they'll be like, oh, I think my microbiome is off. And I was like, okay, so what do you do with it? And then they just go for the sauerkraut. <laughs> <laughs> you must have a lot of sauerkraut in your house. <laughs> they'll, just kind of, they'll, just, they'll just make certain changes. Because I had the sugar yesterday, even though it was organic sugar, because I had the sugar yesterday, this is why I'm feeling what I'm feeling now. Or this is how my stools are looking. This is how my body is reacting to the environmental situation. And that That's is powerful. True. When you give... This, this power back to your children, um, it is really, really powerful. So tell us a little bit about nutrition and how that can help us in the digestive system. Absolutely, because what we put in our mouths can either help us or harm us, improving or activating our immune system. And that is something that I, I educate to my children and my families and my patients because it's no... You know, there's no gray zone. There's actually a black and white zone. <laughs> and either that food that you're putting in your mouth will hurt you or harm you. I mean, it'll help you. And so what we put in our mouths, we, we are really empowering them to make a choice. Okay, do you, want to, do you want to hurt yourself or do you want to improve your body? And so this proper nutrition with like an anti-inflammatory diet not only keeps your digestive system healthy, but also regulates your glucose and stabilizes your insulin levels. And that, which is a insulin is a storage hormone secreted by the pancreas to help regulate the levels of glucose, sugar in the bloodstream and managing your insulin resistance. And it should be the most nutrient dense foods for you. So I have all my parents go down a list and, and my children and my families that whenever you're hungry, you want to make sure that the food that you put in your bodies will help heal your gut bacteria, balance out your insulin levels, and are the most nutrient-dense foods for you. And those foods are vegetables, protein, and healthy fats. Now, those can be taken from if you're vegan, vegetarian. So no matter what diet you're following, (laughs) 
uh, instead of looking at all these diets and being totally confused of what they have different, let's focus on what they all have in common. And we all know that vegetables, protein, and healthy fats are key for our bodies to function appropriately. And so just by going down this list, the kids, my 10-year-old, for the last two years, he has been made, he has made all three of the kids' kids' lunches by himself every single solitary morning without me interjecting on what they need to put in their lunches. And that is because of the fact that he goes down the list. What is my vegetable? What is my protein? What is my healthy fats? This is really nice because of the fact that it helps the child and the families really focus on, instead of focusing on all the stuff they can't have, let's first talk about all the things they can have and empowers them to, okay, I got to make sure that I have these, then I can go have fun. But usually when they eat enough healthy fats, when they have more protein and vegetables, they don't even really need much anything else, especially when a child or family is dealing with a chronic condition. I actually have them remove all grains, all dairy, all sugar, all processed foods. Because I'm the doctor of last resort, so usually they've tried all these gluten-free diets, they've tried all these other ways. And, um, and I noticed that once you just take these grains out of the picture, grains, dairy, sugar, processed foods, my kids, I have not met a single child that will eat tons of vegetable if they eat tons of grains. Mm, <laughs> and so this is why I don't focus on the grain aspect of it. I focus on the vegetables because it's those vegetables. Like if you're going to put something in your mouth, I want to make sure that it's going to optimize your health and healing in every which way possible. You're going to get all your nutrition from that food that I paid. <laughs> so what about for, what about for parents who are saying, Oh, my kids don't eat vegetables. Um, how I, I imagine Medeha, this is what you have in your home, right? Oh, you don't have a closet full of Cheetos and <laughs> popcorn and pretzels no. and all sorts of junk and grains. And I, I too live the same type of, uh, you know, I don't even want to call it diet. It's a lifestyle that you're Absolutely. referring to because I have a chronic condition that I've had to work through all of these things that you have mentioned and have learned a lot in the process. But for those families who say, you know, my kids won't eat vegetables, so how can I, you know, how can I really bring vegetables to the forefront? What, what are your thoughts and ways around that? Let me get in. <laughs> make it in. Make a juice. Make a juice for them. <laughs> Call yeah, it juice. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And you just you sneak it into different places. For example, I know initially when I started this type of lifestyle, my uh, oldest son did not, and I snuck it in into their meatballs. I stuck it into the chili. I put it in their pasta sauce. I stuck it in. I stuck it in every which. I mean, which I still do now. If I'll put it in their meat, I'll still like optimize, even if they're eating, whatever they're eating, I will optimize it to the best that I know possible, right? So they're not just eating that. They will really have like, something vegetable incorporated in it, into it somehow. <laughs> and I this, like, for example, a great tip, especially if you have like pasta eaters. And um, so let's go to like what normal child, well, not normal, but standard American child diet, right? Mm -hmm. Eats. And that's like pasta or chicken nuggets, Right. right. So that's what all the kids eat. So for example, I have my patients start off with there's lentil pasta out there. That is delicious. Like you cannot tell the difference. And um there's lentil, it's organic, it's only one ingredient. There's even chickpea pasta. So there's two, there's so many different my favorite. Chickpea yes, pasta. there's so chickpea pasta and there's lentil pasta. We just we just discovered this um green lentil pasta that is oh my gosh, even better than the chickpea one that I was doing. And um, then I'll take the meat, the, the grass-fed beef or, you know, the meat that I'm doing. I'll stick in into that meat. I will take riced cauliflower and put it into the sauce and the meat. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so never, and then some, so here, so now that's like a really easy way where there's no color, there's no smell, there's no, um, there's nothing different about that pasta. So this is, we're talking about somebody who's really, really particular about the color, the texture, everything. There's so many options in there. So we just have to slowly stick it in there. I put it in their uh, meatballs and I'll put that in the sauce and I'll actually have the sauce will be bone broth because we're going to talk about how bone broth is really healing and try, I, I try to incorporate bone broth into their daily routines and um, put in the bone broth and I will put in like into their lentil, into lentil um, soups. I'll put it into their pastas. I'll put it into their chilies. I'll put it into all these things. So this is where sneaking it is the best way to incorporate those vegetables. 
Because what I really want to emphasize to all your listeners is that it's not your child that is rejecting these foods. It is the microbiome that is rejecting the foods. It's the bad microbiome that is rejecting these foods. Because the, the, the taste and the texture, the child becomes pickier if they have a bad gut microbiome. Because if, they, that, if you think about it, those micro, that microbiome wants nothing to, but to survive. And if it survives, um, it's only going to make you crave. Remember how we talked about the gut-brain connection at the beginning? It's going to tell your brain that I only want the foods that will keep me alive, not the ones that will kill me. And so this is why initially it will become, it will be challenging, but later their bodies will, their bodies and taste buds will start to um, really you know, more along with this diet. And because they're going to start wanting these delicious foods, they're going to start wanting these healing, healing foods, but we have to get rid of at least like sugar. So for example, you got to get rid of these foods that are hijacking our children. And if you think about it, Sue, like we are seriously, our children are not our children anymore. They are enslaved to the sugar industry, to the cereal industry, to, you know, because if they don't get what they want, they will turn into monsters. <laughs> right. It's the chicken nuggets and the pizza and the sugars. Yep. It's the sugars. Like all of, literally, seriously, all these processed foods are enslaving our children and where they don't even, they don't even, they can't even think for themselves. So once you get these foods out there, they can still have the chicken nuggets. Like for example, chicken nuggets. Again, I'll take the rice cauliflower, I'll stick it inside, because again, no color, no taste, it's inside there, in the chicken nugget, I'll put it in the chicken, and then I'll use like almond flour crackers to bread the chicken nugget with a little bit of egg, and there you have the best, easiest chicken nugget. So the key, so the key to- is you have to prepare, and you have a, you have I know to- that I have... I have your beautiful um, recipes in my home. And I think for parents listening, there's a lot of great recipes that you can make. If you're a working parent, you can make them on the weekends. You don't need a ton of time. You just need the thought process and the preparation ahead of time to know how you're going to manage this. Because Absolutely. throwing something in the oven that's pre-packaged doesn't take much thought. Yes, we have to buy it at the store. But preparing foods, which, you know, you and I, it sound like we're in sync in that, Absolutely. which which I know I do. I can prepare a meal in under 30 minutes that is all oh, fresh and I all know. organic and all very Absolutely. healthy with lots of vegetables. And the, and the kids don't, I think the biggest thing that I have learned is that you got to stock up for success. And meaning that we got to get rid of the sugar, the, the, the gluten specifically, the sugar, the gluten, all the processed artificial GMO, the stuff that does not belong in our bodies is not food. It's just food-like substances. And we got to get, really, get rid of that. Um, because when you do that, then it really empowers the child that whatever they can eat at the house you're not struggling. You're not I'm like, no, don't eat the sugar. Don't eat the sugar. Don't eat the sugar. Don't eat the sugar. Because what's going to happen to a child that's always told no? <laughs> They're going to rebel. They're going to rebel. They're going to be like, oh, no. So what it is, the best, what I do is I stock up for success. I still have their crackers. I still have their cookies. I still have their chips, but I've replaced them with a healthier alternative. And what's really cool is when you replace it, for example, like crackers, chips, and, you know, there's grain-free uh, crackers, which are like made out of almond flour and seed flour. And then there's, there's um, tortilla, no-grain tortilla chips. Again, they only need a little bit to go a long way because it's very satiating to them. And then there is, I make for cookies. I mean, I know you've had one of my, some of my baked goods, but you replace those so they can still have cookies. They can have pancakes. They can have waffles. Well, my waffle recipe is three ingredients, bananas, eggs, and almond flour. My brownie recipe is like four ingredients, like five ingredients, like eggs, honey, cocoa powder, almond flour, and an oil. That is it, the end. And so if you stock up, just like what you said, just do it on, if you're a working parent, I'm a working parent too. I completely understand. I do it on the weekends. And I, and I, and I dedicate that time for, for the weekend. So I'm right now stocked up. 
<laughs> We're all coming to your house, Medea. I yeah, think. I think the other important factor is, as you said, your home needs to be be a story about your practice, so to speak. So if you choose, as you're listening, and you choose to take the holistic route in, in terms of food and really prepare food to, to detox and to digest properly and to take care of your second brain, your gut, a very important part of our body, and help yourself... You have to do it as the parent too. So, and, and anyone living in the home needs to partake. I don't think, in my opinion, that you can have two versions of this. No. Because it becomes very difficult for our children to take part in this healthy eating habit and style if, you know, let's say the mom or dad is doing something opposite of that, but protecting the children and trying to create something different. So it's like anything. We are the models for our children as parents. And so as models, we need to first engage ourselves. And the second part of this is empowering our children to be part of the discussion, to know when they're edgy and they need sauerkraut. Of course, that that's a little bit further down the line once we really get our children into this. But our children need to take part in reading ingredients, Absolutely. coming to the grocery store, being in the kitchen with us, helping us prepare, helping taste, and not just be served the food and told to eat it. When they're Absolutely. empowered by being part of making it, it goes so much further, right? Absolutely, because that's exactly the key of how I was able to convert my children. Because when the kids go now to school... And now they're bombarded with all of this like food-like substances and all their friends are doing it. Just that what you're doing at home might not surpass what you're doing at school. Like may, when they may not go to there, they might start eating and sneaking foods. But once they really know and are educated about, because so all my kids know inflammation. I've started that my, my three-year-old will tell me, mama, is this going to kill my bugs in my belly or would this help my bugs in my belly? And they know, and a three-year-old knows that what these foods are doing to their bodies. So for example, my, they all know that what your gut, gut microbiome does, what these foods do, how inflammation is called, what it makes you feel. Then they also know about insulin resistance because that's another key piece that a lot of uh, lead to, you know, insulin resistance a lot of our children are pre-diabetic and leads to migraines and brain fog and sugar crashes and carb cravings because they know I've shown them that look at these processed foods. Look at how much it raises your blood sugar level. So cornflakes, I know this is going to be crazy, but cornflakes actually raises your blood sugar level higher than sugar does. Then comes, you know, then comes Cheerios, then comes a Mar, then comes corn chips, then comes a Mars bar. So we're the, the things that we're giving our children for breakfast or these foods that were these processed foods are not only interfering with our gut microbiome, but it's also interfering with their, you know, their, their insulin levels and glucose levels that it's making them edgy. And so they know that, oh my gosh, I got to cut back on that because that this is why. So it's not just about these good foods. It's in the right proportions about what, like, you know, specifically an what it does to your insulin and glucose level. So if they start having symptoms, they know it's because of that. And I educate them, like, do you want to start feeling like this? They're like, no, 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 no. So therefore, they, they understand what the food does to your body, how it affects your insulin levels, how it affects your glucose levels, how it affects your gut microbiome. So when they go to, and exactly, read, they read labels with me. I'm like, look at that. Does that look like food to you? Do you guys understand that? No, mama. My That's five-year-old. Awesome. Just a month ago, brought home, he got an award at school for kindergarten and they gave him ice cream. So he actually threw it out because he's like, why would I want this artificial food? Why would I give it to anybody else if I, if I know it's going to bother me? So I'm not going to give it to anybody because of the fact that I don't want it to bother anybody else because I know it's not good. So he actually threw it out and he came back and goes, mama, you were trying to kill my gut microbiome. Oh my like gosh, that's hysterical. In, you were trying to kill the bugs in my belly. And I was like, no, I don't want that. that. Like, so they will, they will, because they are so conscious of what this food actually does to their body, they will reject it. And then what is the chance? I mean, God, you know, everybody knows my, I have a, a 10, 11 year old who just turned 11, but 
11 year old now that will is freaked out of putting anything artificial in his body because of the fact that it will, I mean, as in he knows that it, what's going to do to the microbiome. What is the chance these children will go to experiment drugs? <laughs> Yours? <laughs> Not at all. Standard, lower because they're now conscious and they are educated about what it does to your bodies. And I think that is an enormous thing to teach our children. Not You mentioned at the beginning of our discussion, happiness and success. We don't know what makes our children happy or what will make them successful in their life because that is something that only they know. Absolutely. But teaching them about their body, and I love to think of a body as like a temple. You know, we we need to take care of it. And as you mentioned, we need to take care of it in many different ways, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and mentally. And what we put in it is what we get out of it. And so I think really worldwide looking at how we can educate our children with this knowledge is the foundation just like many other things just like learning to read and learning to write and spelling and seeing the world and knowing what a tree looks like and just opening their eyes to various things allowing their curiosity when it comes to our bodies and the whys of what we put into it that is also empowering for our children Absolutely. Absolutely. And just to empower it, because then, then you, will, you will truly know when they're not enslaved to these, the, the industries around them, when um, we role model it, when they see it, we can truly see their full potential. But like, what, is, what are they capable of? Like, this is awesome. Right now, our children are being hijacked. And this is where starting in the home, starting at, you know, trying to make these small little steps. Remember, any step in the right direction is better than no steps in any direction. Absolutely. Just take and it start one, small, baby steps. Start really baby steps. Look at this. This has artificial colors and throw it out. You know, replace it with something that is not. You know, so slowly but surely just start reading labels. Look at the foods. Um, start. You don't have to take out gluten right away or dairy. You just have to start by getting the artificial food-like substances out of our bodies out of our children's lives and specifically that starts with reading labels and being your, because you empower the system with your dollar. So if you're not going to go, if you're, you can still get the cereal, just get the healthier cereal, or you can still get the pasta, just get the healthier version of this pasta. Or what you can do. Right. right. Make different choices. And I think it's, it's such great information. And just to share my, my own journey briefly, mm-hmm. uh, I am on a no sugar no grains, no gluten, and no dairy, and have never felt better. Oh. And mine is all from a health standpoint because these I had no idea how badly, well, of course, it's all from a health standpoint, but Absolutely. I had no idea how these were affecting my gut and what it felt like to eat differently and not feel bloated, sick, foggy, ill mm-hmm. until... I didn't feel those things. So sometimes we don't realize, and you know, for those of our listeners that this is speaking to, sometimes we don't realize how we are affected until we no longer are affected by making different choices. So I I I second that. Go to the store, start reading labels, look at what's in your cabinet with your children. Let them be part Mm -hmm. of helping you. I have a child that comes to my house periodically for dinner and she checks this isn't the labels, but she checks expiration dates because she's really big on not having expired food. So children can really become part of any of these processes and making Absolutely. different choices. And it's, it's such an enormous gift. So I, I'd, I'd love to, it, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So that was just the digestive. And then obviously there's, I would love to touch on the, um, sure. The Let's touch on those. And so, because we live in a toxic world, so we talked about the digestive and nutrition, vegetables, protein, healthy fats, make sure they get those at every meal, get your bone broth in, all that fun stuff. And then we have toxins because we live in a very toxic world and most of us are invisible. So we're exposed on a daily basis to all these toxics that, toxins that can accumulate in our bodies. And that places a really heavy burden on the liver and the organs that is responsible for moving it, you know, like the kidneys, the liver, the lungs, right? It's too much for all of these organs to handle. So when you're specifically, your liver is overwhelmed and can't eliminate the toxins, the liver tends to store it. And it basically clogs the drain. 
And when it clogs the drain, all this, all the stuff that the body should have eliminated doesn't eliminate it. And those toxins then accumulate in the body that should have been eliminated, but because now it's clogged, it doesn't. And it lowers immunity and increases the vulnerability to autoimmune disease, cancers, blood sugar balances. And then we have is um, losing, you know, causes like weight gain and also um, leads to heart disease, diabetes, and strokes. That's obviously later on, but they can even affect our epigenetics and inflame our gut leading to leaky gut syndrome. But our children are not meant to tolerate the 85,000 chemicals that are on the market that their little bodies are, are, are exposed to. They're not meant to tolerate those. They're not meant to handle those. And again, that's also, we, that's again, educating and empowering our children, our families. So just changing up whatever cleaners, whatever artificial, you want to try just think green. So green soaps, green, like something as clean. So if you're not going to put it in, if you're not going to eat it, then don't put it on and around your body. (laughs) Because you want to just think natural environment. I know right now specifically, like every child is wearing pajamas to bed. But all night long now, they all, these these pajamas all have flame retardants in them. And that mess, that is called a xenoestrogen, which messes, which basically messes up with your hormones <laughs> and causes inflammation in the body. So these are simple things. Just change up this, just changing just this, just the, um, the pajama <laughs> will increase a lot of the stress because like 50%, like the kids are sleeping 12 hours a day, 10 hours a day. So if they're in that pajama 10 hours a day, <laughs> there was these small, simple things. I tell them well, to change out your pajamas and, you know, just think, just change your utensils that you're cooking with. Um, or just keep the area around you as green as possible um, is one of the pieces. Then we have is the stress, sleep, social, and spiritual health. And our children now are stressed beyond belief. Mm-hmm. When I was a child, I played in the court. Like, you know, I was born 1981. So, you know, I was playing in the court. I was... You know, we were just, we just had fun. We didn't know what was going on in the, in, the, in, the, in the news. We had no idea what was going on in the world. We just knew what was going on with us. <laughs> right. And now these children, especially with technology, with the constant alerts, with social media, with all of these things that our bodies and, you know, everybody now talking about it, right? <laughs> right. Our bodies and our children are constantly under stress. And stress contributes to inflammation and stress taxes the immune system. And it actually stress chronically increases the levels of cortisol, right? And that is a hormone that's released to prepare us to respond to all these life-threatening situations. But now, because of the fact that, you know, we're so confused and it's constantly being triggered, we always think that we're in a state of like, you know. Fight or flight. Fight or flight, absolutely. And this then leads to inflammation, diseases, you know, all of this like craziness, it actually messes up, increases insulin resistance that leads your kids, again, more inflammation. So it's really, really important to incorporate some sort of stress management technique into your, da- into your child's daily routine. And that, I mean, for me, for my kids, we do uh, mindfulness. So everything, they're sitting and eating, not just watching TV, but they're sitting there and actually eating and seeing what's going on in their lives. And on top of that, we, so we're mindful and along with the meditation that we do at night before we go to bed, prayer is huge in our households to really incorporate, just let your body be still and focus on what really matters in life. It's not the money. It's not all this other stuff. It's not what's going on in the news. It's really how you are and what, you know, what you're doing and how kind you are and how, what you're giving back to the world. Um, but that is the stress piece of it. That we have a sleep, you know, again, st- sleep for us, for our families and children are so critical. Why? Because of the fact that if we, you know, while we sleep, our, their body, little bodies don't consume that much energy. That leaves more energy for the body to remove the toxins, make hormones and fight infections. So I know my, um, they go to, they have a specific time routine. They know exactly what they need to do. They um, get to bed because they know that it improves their immune system and then they wake up so much more refreshing. And that's literally the most power, one of the really powerful way to boost your family's health. 
And then keeping people around you that love you, like social health is so powerful. And it's all powerful, but I love this all. But social health specifically, because, you know, our, as parents, we can affect the direct chemistry in our child's brain to the extent, extent that her self-esteem and inner thoughts can be more self-encouraging than ra- rather fraught with self-criticism. And that can occur with two different pieces, right? And that is from the social health because science now has shown, now this is what I love. I know I was doing this, you know, when I when we, me and we were together um, at, on the show, but it's seriously parenting and the way that we interact with these children Having a positive relationship, filling your body, giving your child love and appreciation, you know, releases hormones into their bloodstream that actually strengthens their immune system, improves their overall health and healing. Because seriously, good parenting, there's, there's, an, there's, an, there's so many books that are written on science and parenting and how that just this love activates like the ventral tegmental area, right? That's stimulated by oxytocin. And, um, you know, then it also releases and, you know, all the different areas in the brain that, that parenting, that good parenting and that can allow the child to, to understand, you know, their emotions and be able to put words to their emotions. Because if you don't give your child that love and affection, you know, that can create like poor functioning um, corpus callosum. Like, I love this stuff. Can you tell? Like a poor functioning <laughs> corpus callosum. And then that leads to a lack of compassion and concern. Mm. So seriously, just this love affects so many different pieces of a child's brain that actually determines who they become. And that too is just positivity because we will live in a world with negativity. Social media, um, everybody around you is telling you how terrible you're, you should be and what you, because obviously happiness doesn't sell. Your kids right. are not going to want, um, if they have an iPhone 5, they're going to want an iPhone 10, but the only way that the, the, the society is going to allow them to get their parents to pay for that is when they start feeling bad about the iPhone 5. So when they're saying, oh, this is not good enough, you are not good enough. I think we are raised in a society right now that all of us are told us we are not good enough until we reach these standards. And that standard is like what society has dictated as a standard. And that's only a standard in that moment because it changes every single moment. Absolutely. Like you have to get all A's or you have to do this. And our child, like we're not good enough. I think we are telling our children that they are not good enough by our actions, by what we, we intend as parents. We are trying to do good for them, but it's that negative constantly focusing on all the things that they're doing wrong, not what they're doing right. Yes. that is so powerful because that in and of itself, that negative spiritual energy is related to increased stress, more depression, a weakened immune system, increases inflammation. So I have my I have my children and families immediately when they wake up in the morning, say 10 things they're grateful for. Love and it. that I feel is the most powerful key in all of these pieces because you can be, you can be, um, eating really well. You can be, you know, having people around you that love you. You can have all these pieces. You can be meditating. But if you are having a frust- if you're frustrated with life, if you're frustrated or you're a pessimistic or if you're negative, if you're looking at the glass half like empty than half full, it really changes everything. They've done studies where just if you're frustrated with life, your heart rate variability is like all over the place. But when you live a life of appreciation, and when you live a life of appreciation, you can that heart rate variability becomes a nice sine wave. And your, your child then is happier internally, externally, you're happier, less tantrums. So even for my children, every single solitary morning, and I've been doing this since they were young, and at night, we, we sing the thankful songs in our, in our house. Thank you for our eyes. Thank you for our ears. Thank you for another beautiful day. I always talk about that. And we talk about all the things they're doing right and what they're um, everything they're thankful for. And as soon as I hear a complaint, I know that this piece is lacking. So I don't even I don't even want one complaint from the kids because I know that they're not looking at that. Uh, they're starting to slide down the negative route, right? So I really, so as soon as I'm like, okay, no, if you, if you complain, one, we're gonna bump up the gratitude. <laughs> 
we got to, so I use gratitude as a medication, medication quotes, because as soon as I start seeing any negative around my child, um, as soon as I start seeing any negativity around the child, it really, really makes a big difference. I agree. I, I have been, I practice gratitude myself and have with my children as well. And I'm part of a gratitude group that I've been working with for gosh, a while now. And every day, each member of this group, it's an online group, post three things that we're grateful for. And not just, you know, my coffee and the sunshine, really deep things deep and things. deep things. And I find myself because gratitude does work. I find myself walking around thinking, wow, life is amazing. And, and I'm amazing. And, you know, isn't it great? And all of these wonderful things and not feeling that pull that sometimes occurs with negative energy. Because Absolutely. the negative energy isn't within me. And that no. I think that's part of the spiritual health of our children, right? Absolutely. And I, if you notice, I didn't talk about religion or this or that. It's really because it, it, religion is a set of, set of values. But this is really connecting with your soul. Mm-hmm. Because the fact that you are, um, you, we are mind, body, soul. There's no doubt about it. And we are this really improving that negative, exactly that negative spiritual and healing the soul is important aspect in actually preventing and healing chronic. I, I, that was was my little gist. I I love it. I love it. And there's so (laughs) Medea, there's so much information here. I mean, we could, we could talk for hours and I think it would be incredible to allow our (laughs) listeners when this, you know, allow our listeners time to process all of this and to practice some of these things that we've shared today, that you've shared today, and then perhaps have you back in a bit to to really follow up and talk about other ways to live a holistic life. But I would love to invite you all to check out um, Medea's website, which is holisticmommd.com, and go to My Healing Bundle for lots and lots of resources. And also, I just want to, again, mention your book, which is The Holistic Rx, Your Guide to Healing Chronic Inflammation and Disease. There's massive amounts of information in there, lots of great recipes. I have the book. I know it's fabulous, so I can attest to that. And I really want to thank you for being on the show today and providing such an incredible amount of resource and information and ideas and things for parents to think about. It's been a real honor and pleasure. Oh my gosh, my honor's all mine. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) And thank you all for joining us. Remember, every moment is a new moment for Conscious Connection. Thanks for listening to Conscious Parents Thriving Kids. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at iTunes or wherever you listen in. And be sure to visit DeCaroParentCoaching.com for a free download of 10 ways to connect with your child.